Howdy, my name is Abhishalini and I am here to explain how to convert IEEE 754 32-bit floating point notation to its decimal equivalent. So this is the example that I'm going to consider. This is the 32-bit floating point notation in IEEE 754 format. Now let's convert this to its decimal equivalent. So IEEE 754 format states that the first bit is the sign bit. And this tells us whether the decimal equivalent would be a positive or a negative number. And since it's a zero, it's, we can conclude that our decimal equivalent would be positive. If it's one, then the decimal equivalent would be negative. But in this case, we have a positive decimal. The next eight bits are the exponent bits. This gives us the value of the exponent of the number in scientific notation. So let's convert the binary representation into its decimal equivalent just for the exponent. So in this case, it's one zero. This is in binary. And converting this to its decimal equivalent would be zero times two to the zero plus one times two to the one times one times two to the two. Crap. I'm sorry for the mistake. And so forth till we reach the last bit over here, and that would be one times two to the seven. So this would be two to the one plus two to the two. These all will result to zeros, so plus two to the seven. So that's two plus four plus one twenty eight. This will be one thirty four. Now we have to make sure that we deduct the bias from this value. An exponential bias is included while representing it in IEEE 754 format because these eight bits need to re represent negative and positive exponential values. So the exponential bias for single position floating point notation is 127. Any exponent bit that represents number less than 127 would result in a negative exponential number. But since we have a number that's greater than the exponential bias, our exp actual exponential value would be a positive number. So it would be 134 minus the bias, and we would get 7. So our exponential value is 7. Now the third part is to figure out the mantissa of the number in the scientific notation. And the fraction bit, those are the remaining bits left in the 32 bits. These are the fraction bits. This helps us figure out the mantissa. So what we are going to do is multiply each bit by a certain number. So you multiply the first bit, that's one, by two to the negative one. You multiply the second bit by two to the negative two. You multiply the third bit by two to the negative three. And the fourth bit by two to the negative four, fifth bit by two to the negative five, and so on. And then you add them all up to find the mantissa. So mantissa in this case would be 1 times 2 to the negative 1 plus 0 times 2 to the negative 2 plus 1 times 2 to the negative 3 plus 0 times 2 to the negative 4 plus 1 times 2 to the negative 5 and so on. 
but we do not need to consider the remaining values because we know those will be zeros. So this will be 2 to the negative 1 plus this is a 0 to 0 plus 2 to the negative 3 plus 2 to the negative 5. And we can put this in our calculator to find out the actual value. So it's 2 to the negative 1 plus 2 to the negative 3 plus 2 to the negative 5. And you would get the value in your calculator as 0 0.65625. So that forms the mantissa. Now to find the decimal equivalent, I'm going to give the general form and this helps out figure out any of the decimal equivalent once you get the E and M values. So the way to find out is by putting into this general form that is negative 1 to the power s where s is the sign bit, it's the 0, 1 bit over here, times 1 plus the mantissa times 2 to the power the exponent. So in this case, it's negative 1 times 0, because that is our sign bit, and then you multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.65625, and then you multiply it by 2 to the power e, and in this case, we have gotten our e as 7. So the final answer would be 1.06, sorry, 1.65625 times 2 to the 7. You plug this in your calculator, you get 1.65625 times 2 to the 7, and you end up with the decimal equivalent of the floating point notation. In this case, it's 212. I hope you understood how this works. Thanks for watching the video.